Welcome to another episode of Hard Factor presented by the Barstool News Network. It is Wednesday, April 29th. What the fuck Wednesday? And the year is 2020. Mark is off today. Happy anniversary to Mark. Congrats on the sex. See you tomorrow, buddy. But today we've got nine crazy listener submitted tales for What the Fuck Wednesday. Are your stories crazy like mine are, guys? Uh, fairly, fairly crazy. Not, uh, not. I've, I've seen crazier, but they're they're interesting. So, uh, uh, well, well, I'm going to help you out there and uh, and take your lead to promote the show. <laughs> yeah, mine are fucking nuts. Uh, I mean, can't, can't wait to get into it. I really hope that the one that you added last minute will is as good as I think it's going to be. Oh, it is. And and more and much more and more and more than just that story. Uh, no clock on Wednesday, as always. But we do have a clock solution for Thursday already lined up. Ooh. So uh, get excited yeah. for that. I'm, I'm curious to hear what it is because I don't know. And we're going to get into voicemails and five star reviews today. And it's a hot topic. Wow. OK, well, nice. we might we'll learn more later then. So, Wes, get us going. All right, guys, this one comes from uh, Garrett from Iowa. Thank you, as always, Garrett. Uh, so, guys, now that we have all seen Parasite and know that the poor family finds out I, the maid's I, husband I, has I, been I, living I, in the rich uh, family's oh, basement. Wait. We what? do. Yeah. Pat, Pat still hasn't seen Parasite. You still haven't seen it. I pretty much have seen the whole fucking movie now because every time you get like halfway through a goddamn spoiler, whatever. All right, All right. keep going. Okay, right. you got to well, say spoiler alert, asshole. You got to say that. It's been how many months? It's like at least a year, right? If you haven't point? seen it by no. now, I'm sorry. Six months. I'm busy. I've been busy. Spoiler <laughs> alert: uh, the 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 dinosaurs in Jurassic Park. Um, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? <laughs> They, they, all of them are still there. Um, okay. That's actually how the movie ended, dude. Whatever. All right. Sorry. Again, spoiler alert. Um, okay. So over, um, you know, over the years, I've seen these uh, stories pop up all over. Someone finds a person living in their attic or crawl space. And in some cases, they have constructed a pretty nice bunker for themselves. Mm. Um, so I saw one where a guy was going to lose his house. So before he did, he uh, constructed a hiding space so he could live there for free while the new owners had no idea. It was it was it had me fucked up for a minute, if you know what I mean. Yeah, but I mean, how often do you think this? I, I mean, probably more than you think, maybe. I don't know. Um, I think that's a pre that's a pretty crazy move. Like to be like, all right, I'm getting kicked out of my house. I better uh, build a secret house within my house how many houses so stressful. Yeah. how many houses how many house sales include a stowaway like, one in what? one in five one in ten one in i don't know one in ten million it's happened <laughs> <laughs> it can happen <laughs> it's not it's not that likely your house is more likely to like burn down from a fire than have well, a most people in inspect the whole thing yeah uh, so yeah. well it's also possible that the people that are stowing away are really good and we just it's don't true. know to get around the inspector, you'd have to be real good. Yeah, you'd but, be real good. Yeah. Anyway, so now the mayor of Bowling Green, Kentucky, Bruce Wilker Wilkerson, uh, says this has happened to him. Uh, Bruce is renovating one of the homes that he owns that taxpayers donated to him. And while staying overnight, he heard some ruckus um, out in his cellar. So he thought, what is all that ruckus? Oh. And he went to investigate and found some blood on the cellar door. And if you don't know what a cellar is, it's it's a it's a kind of a, a term for a basement. Um, it's an old old timey term for a basement, basically. Um, yeah. I, you you do not want to find and a blood below ground yeah. on your cellar door. You do not want to find blood. That's the last there. place you want, other than on yourself. Mm -hmm. That's the last place. You, it's or like under a, someone's. It's like a well, right? Yeah. Except dry. There's it's a it's a well for air under the house. Yeah. Well, I, is a cellar, you know, like the cellar, they have like the access from the outside of the house, like a tornado shelter. And it's usually mm -hmm. like a slanted deal that, that is that is that or is it just a basement? No, it's just a basement. It just it's like my grandparents had a, a, a like a, a really small basement, but they called it a cellar. I think it's like a more of an unfinished basement uh, that you can access, like you said, from like a tornado door from the outside. Also um, higher. Well, what has a higher crime rate, cellars or basements? I, mm. I, ugh, I mean, basements are more common. There's but are no you more likely to commit a crime in the uh, cellar or the basement? Cellar, for sure. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I think so. Absolutely. Think cellar, Bad yeah. things happen in cellars. 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, so we found the blood on the cellar door and a bag with women's clothing in it and some other stuff in it. So, you know, he, uh, or he, he went back inside and then, then, Jeez, nothing, Wes, this story isn't crazy at all. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, this totally is the crazy normal. one. This is the crazy. Also one. real quick guys, a basement is a floor of a building, which is partly or entirely below ground level. A cellar is a room below ground. Uh, that's usually smaller than a basement. Yeah, okay. this my yeah you know, my grandparents' cellar was was very small. Um, so anyway, so so he went out, found this, didn't see anyone. So um, he Is uh, the he, same he, grandparent that's a milkman. Uh, no, that will be great. Yeah, the same side of the family. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, um, so he went outside and he didn't he he called the police to see if anyone had been reported missing, which no one had been. So he went inside to continue applying uh, the wood paneling to his office, and then some um, electrical outlets. Uh, started to not work and went out. So I went to the cellar to investigate because like, ah, I, uh, some, I'm going to go back to where I found that blood. See if anything else is interesting down there. Yeah, he just let yeah. the blood go, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just went back to work. It wasn't a big deal. Just a little just bit of blood. Went back to hanging wood paneling? <laughs> yeah. Well, I made that up. I, I just okay. assumed that's what he was doing in his office. Um, so, so then he, when he went back to the cellar, he opened up the door and he found a young woman there covered in dirt. Um, oh. Apparently, yeah, the mayor said that the woman had told him that she would have been hiding from someone in his cellar. Um, but when he called the police, she took off down the street, just dirt and all, just shaking off her body uh, like a scared dog. Um, and the mayor said that he estimates the woman to be about 20 years old, but she has not been identified yet. Um, so they have no when fucking did this idea. What happened? Um, I don't know. It's uh, the, the articles from from the, the 27th. So she must have been lodged in somewhere real good to be covered in dirt. Also, where yeah. is she now? There's no way. I mean, they don't know. She's on the lamb. She could be a crackhead. She could be mm. um, someone running from like a, a boyfriend that's like abusive to her. I don't who know. It doesn't you don't you don't find a crackhead that's covered in dirt in a cellar. In my experience, this is something different. Know. Right. More know. like. Yeah. Yeah. Covered in like wrappers of, of, mm -hmm. of convenience store things. Yeah. Well, she said she was hiding from Donald's. something. So. Yeah, you know, yeah, like a quilt of McDonald's, right? Egg yes, muffins wrappers. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, so she she did say that she was hiding from someone. So that's you know it's it's oh, she's okay. in trouble. Well, she's in trouble. So when the when the when the police um, came, Wilkerson said, "quote I told the officers when they came that she didn't steal anything. I asked the officers why they were grinning, and they said that no matter how they write the report, it's going to say the mayor." Locked a woman in his house, and Wilkerson thought that was just a just a knee slapper. Um, thought it's very no, funny. No, but, that's right. when you that's when you shut the doors and you say, "Boys, you work for me. You do, you're not going <laughs> to fucking write that in the report. Well, this could the, get out of hand." Yeah. Well, the question is, <laughs> did the woman he was holding inside his basement just escape, and this whole story is just to cover his own ass? Um, was she oh, it's like, shady? It's, it's it stinks to yeah. high heaven. I don't, I don't know, but yeah, they need to find this girl before the mayor does. In oh, my opinion. nobody found her. She's just a girl who ran off into the distance somewhere. Nobody could right. stop her or find yeah. her. Yeah. Well, oh, what, boys, what, you know how they are. They run away. <laughs> well, <laughs> if she got away and he was keeping her, why would he call the police? Yeah, that's a good question. I, um, if she I got away and he's keeping her, you just say, Hope to, she gets put it on, car. to put it on the record, to put it on record that she got away. Mm -hmm. not, so not that if she his, comes back, then he has not a story? Not his property anymore. Well, he, well, he, can, he can just at. say that, no, oh, I, I wasn't keeping her in my basement. She was living there, and I had no idea. And I, <laughs> I, I, I in the struggle, there was some blood happened. You know what I mean? So, I he's, the, he's the rooster from Looney Tunes. <laughs> yeah, this guy. Exactly. Yeah. Look, right exactly. there, there's yeah. blood on the cellar yeah. door. Right, right. So, um, yeah, like I said, they better they better find this girl before the mayor does, because something, something's weird going on here um i don't know what it is but that's uh yeah that's that's pretty interesting i kind huh? of i kind of forgot which town you were talking about but i don't ever want to go to that town. kentucky i think right bowling green kentucky mm -hmm. bowling green yep mm -hmm. no thank there you go. all right uh by the way jersey week continues with nevada day vegas nights uh and a nevada hat here subscribe to the youtube.com slash hard factor news page to watch us look like idiots every day these next stories come to us from patricia bubba mark and several other members of the Hardo Hive, two domestic American stories about Americans who are just needing to feel more American again. And so 
I mean, you guys know how that feels, right? You've been locked down. You mm-hmm. want to just get out there and exercise your basic freedoms. So yeah, man. Uh, I've been going out with my, with my permission slip signed by John Hancock. It's called mm. Constitution. Ooh. Oh, yeah. I thought you were going with like a Glock joke there. What were you mm. saying, Wes? No, I was going to say, yeah, I agree. You want to get out. You want to throw a baseball around. You want to, you know, do, do some normal shit. The Glock, yeah. Will, is my chaperone. That's your chaperone, right? The Constitution. Who, who, who? The people are making that joke though, right? That's a yeah. No, it's I found it from my right wing burner account. I was, oh, okay. <laughs> I thought I thought I, I thought I heard that's that. That's the somewhere. permission slip. The Constitution. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I'm gonna start using that. Okay, so uh, everybody's needing to feel more American again in the lockdown. And first up, something about the lockdown makes you crave some good old fashioned American fast food. At least once in a while, in my oh. case. I mean, I've been pounding some fast food when I go through the drive through um, Yeah. Yeah. So that's why uh, one man in Oregon took Wendy's up on their generous offer of giving away free orders of four-piece chicken nuggets to anybody visiting a drive through this past Friday in a promotion called Group Nug. Uh, one four-piece. No, uh, no, that's yeah. not what it was called. <laughs> it was. Group Nug. Yeah. yeah. It is Oregon. Yeah. It, was, it was nationwide. Nation oh, Park. really? Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, at, at participating Wendy's. Okay. Um, and so, yeah. So one four piece nuggets per customer. And that's the limit. But in order to get past the nugget limit, Twitter user at Squeezy, S-K-W-E-E-Z-Y. Uh, he's a juggalo influencer. He drove to 11 different Wendy's in the greater Portland and Vancouver, Washington area <laughs> uh, twice. Did the route two times to collect 22 <laughs> different free free four piece nuggets. <laughs> Look at that picture. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so Squeezy was very proud of himself. He posted on Twitter, "Times is tough, so when I heard at Wendy's was giving out free four piece nugs today, I knew I had to hustle. I hit every damn Wendy's twice within 17 miles across two states. It took five hours, but now we eaten for free a week. What it do with seven O's?" <laughs> And then so, it's a picture, yeah, a picture of his route, and then uh, the twenty-two nuggets that he got. Let's see. Okay, uh, I wonder if Squeezy's ever heard of something called a cost-benefit analysis. So, <laughs> obviously, gas is cheap. This is a major advantage. You can run this scam, but five got hours, twenty-two dollars worth of food. Yeah, Let's five hours. So, what table. is that an hourly? Wait, you know, Those things are normally ninety-nine cents. By the way, four fifty. He an made hour. Uh, five four dollars an hour. Yeah, or, I don't, yeah, or I don't know, and I, I don't think he's eating for a week. I think Squeegee's going to get the munchies. Yes, I mean I don't know what, what are Juggalos into the weed. I don't know. Anyways, yeah. uh, they're into at, everything. Yeah, at Squeezy, he's ready for the supply chain strain that's about to hit everybody. At least as long as his twenty-two uh, four-piece nuggets last him. Speaking of the <laughs> Juggalos, shout out to Cam. Uh, he submitted this one. The Juggalos have called off the 2020 gathering of the Juggalos, which is a massive event. The spokesperson, and I'm not sure who the spokesperson of the Juggalos is, said, quote, Skinny J or Violent, lo- or violent Steve? V- violent violent Steve? Skinny, no idea. Violent J and Skinny um, skinny something? I had assumed the it clown. was just like an mm-hmm. animatronic talking head that they like. Yeah, a guy that programmed. cut his nipples off or something. <laughs> yeah, has, has like vinyl <laughs> tape over his yeah. nips. Yeah, <laughs> it's definitely nipple robot piercings. Head. Whoever, yeah. whoever he is. Yeah. Well, so here's the quote from that person. The bottom line is simply that we refuse all caps to risk even one juggalo life by hosting a gathering during these troubling times. And so the gathering of the juggalos is off. Um, mm. Unfortunate That's news. Next up, I, uh, I watched American- a, hmm. I watched a, a video from the juggalos where a chick sucked like six dudes dicks in a row. What? Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's- that oh, was so risking six <laughs> that juggalo like, lives. That, the juggalo, gathering of the juggalos, they, is crazy. They get crazy. I've heard some stuff from Howard Stern where they go and, you know, they, they infiltrate these things and they, people are, like, cutting their dicks off. And, what? like, I mean, the, the, the joke of me, of a guy with his nipples cut off, was, was very real. That's oh, that's wow. the kind of shit that happens. They, they just try to one-up the craziness on each other at all times. Well, you can I'd like a fact follow, check. Yeah. I'm telling you. You could go follow Squeezy. He might be able to tell you he's he's definitely a juggalo influ- influencer. All right. Next up, though, a mayor in Texas, kind of like how Squeezy wants to get back to eating more nuggets all the time. Beaumont Mayor Becky Ames, she broke her own stay-at-home order last Tuesday to visit her spot, 
her version of the Wendy's with the nugs, the nail bar. That's mm. right, friends. She needed to like, you know, get her nails done. Mayor Ames said that she only went in for 10 minutes to get polish removed, and that's it. The owner was the only other person inside the building. And, and she, you know, she she didn't, you know, she didn't do anything else. And I just got to say, don't we all want to go get a fucking haircut or something like that yep. right now? Because I do. I do that. for sure. Yeah. And you can remove nail polish at home pretty easily from what I from what I know. Yeah. Right. She just did this because she needed to go see her friend who runs the salon or something. Right. She just needs some pampering. This is look, this is maybe something we went over this a little bit yesterday. Maybe this is something I just don't understand. Like the gym. The nail salon, the hair. Oh, that's right. You're like, you're not into this. You're just like, you're just going to shave your own rat tail when it's time. <laughs> yeah. Well, I keep. Yeah, I'm going to get the rat tail very close to it. But I do want to point one thing out. It's OK. If you work it out, if you figure it the fuck out and there's you and one person in a store, it's all right. Go do it. I feel mm. like that's OK, too. I mean, they should start opening places with limitations. Everywhere. Problem is. Some idiot sees that and he's like. It's open, and he's not planning ahead and making sure that he and the nail salon lady although, are the only folks in the store. Although, although I did see an updated uh, projection for the uh, total death rate in America from that University of Washington place, and it went up from like sixty-seven to like seventy-five thousand total deaths with the um, early opening. So, um, yeah. so far, they're not expecting a, a gigantic increase. Yeah, a little, well, yeah. And and Pat, you also just look like a giant shithead if you're the mayor telling everyone else to stay inside and, and you're going out and do it. Every every woman out there that usually gets their nails done wants to go get their nails done. Ooh, you know, yeah. it's routine. It makes them feel good. I get it. You can't yeah. be telling people not to do it and then be seen in there with your fucking nails up there getting dried right. and shit. I mean, I'm a disgusting, hairy dude and I'm wearing hats because I don't like the way my hair looks like I right. can't imagine that's, what some people. That's are why wearing. I wear a hat at all times. Yeah. Anyhow. Hats. Hats. Yeah. Hats. Hats. They hide your hair when it gets too long. And uh, in my case, make sure like you're like uh, like it's super wispy because it's very thin. All right. This next one is from uh, P Fitz 11 B. And I'm going to call this segment the black couch. Well, the first parts from B P Fitz 11 B. And this is an update to us. St- oh, oh, shit. No, guys. Sorry. I, yeah. I jumped way ahead. Did you oh, jump yeah, ahead? Yeah. That's OK. That's okay. No, 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 no. The black couch is coming up later. P. Fitz, we got this story. <laughs> I was wondering later. what you were My bad. Like that bad. tease, Will. It's a different <laughs> guys, kind of tease. Guys, guys, I just got way too excited. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, any, any, oh, wait, sorry. Yeah, that's it. Nothing else about, about, about the mayor. <laughs> sorry, fellas, I got a way out of order here. Glad there's not that's a okay. clock today. What, what no, time did good? you work out today? Yeah. Or, uh, you know what happened today? I Will's drank relaxed a, right now. No, 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 no. <laughs> I am drinking mm-hmm. some whiskey right now, but... <laughs> mm-hmm. You know what happened today is I drank a ton of coffee, mm. a ton of coffee. Yeah, I've also had my thinking. herbal. I've also had my herbal uh, remedies as well, yeah. but also a ton of coffee. I think that's what's right. happening here. Yeah, so you're gotcha. a little scatterbrained. I I it's like okay. either way, Willie. I you know okay. I, I, all, all right. the flavors of the of the Will Rainbow I'm into. This one comes from Tino Andretti uh, and is an older one, guys. But it's just too good to pass up. And honestly, I'm kind of pissed that we missed this, but. Uh, Last month, a Washington state man led police on a high-speed chase on Interstate 5. Uh, and according to state troopers, this man hit two vehicles on the highway and just kept on driving at speeds in excess of 109 miles an hour. So you're going real fast. Uh, and Whoa. during the pursuit, the driver veered off the freeway and started driving on the Centennial Hike and Bike Trail uh, before kicking it back onto the roadways, where his 1996 Buick was finally brought to a stop when police administered spike strips. So this guy was a fucking maniac. He was all Mm -hmm. over the road. Uh, Menace. Yeah, the Centennial Trail is like, you know, straight up like hike and bike, like, you know, thin people on there. Yeah, and he's driving like uh, almost 100 miles an hour on that thing, or probably not on that, but north of 100, 109, guys. 109, he was clocked at on the road, but you got to slow down to go on a bike. Yeah, it's true. The suspension on that Buick, it's old. It's almost 30 Mm -hmm. years old. Mm -hmm. When police approached the vehicle... They found something they didn't expect, and that's because when they finally made it to the car's window, they discovered that the driver's seat was occupied by a pit bull who apparently had also been piloting the vehicle, according to authorities, and is also a very sweet girl. I told you they're dangerous. I told you. 
That's right. If it was a different breed, Wes, would you have felt uh, differently about this? Or you just knew that it was going to be a pit bull? I knew. I knew the only breed that was capable of this kind of destruction of was driving a, a car. Yeah. I don't think you guys I got the reaction I wanted there. The fucking dog was driving the car. <laughs> and I'm not kidding. He was driving the car. That's crazy. So was he buckled in? How did he maintain like, no, he's a pit bull. He's, he has no common sense. He he's just was like, he just was well, like was the, gripping the, owner, the wheel with his teeth. <laughs> 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 the owner was still in the car, right? I'm assuming this yeah, was a guys, last second switcheroo here. No, it wasn't a last second switcheroo, Will. Huh? But in the passenger seat, in fact, was the vehicle's uh, owner, uh, a hammered 51 year old man who also <laughs> happens to be the owner of a disappointed. Well, he's a disappointed dog owner because his, so, his dog can't drive for shit. Uh huh. But who was pressing the accelerator? That I don't fucking know. So during the chase, one of the troopers attempted to corner the suspect's <laughs> car and did a double take when he noticed that the pit bull was, in fact, sitting in the driver's seat at 109 miles an hour. Well, the hammered owner handled the wheel from the passenger side. <laughs> That's a funny drunk, though. Like, yeah. I mean, That's his, his idea thinking. was like, like, I want to I want to get these guys. Yeah, to see some dog driving. Yeah, that's some fast thinking. I mean, he was obviously the one that was doing the driving and just th threw no. the pit bull. No, no I think, Wes, he Wes. Was, this was a design prank. Uh, no, guys, he, the guy, the, the the human had his left foot on the gas pedal and right. his that's, left I, hand that's what I'm saying. driving oh. the fucking car from okay. the passenger seat while his dog <laughs> it was, was a encouraging prank his dog to, to, to grab. Be like, Look at the oh, dog okay. driving so wow. fast. Well, if it was a it was a pretty pretty committed to that prank. When, when questioned... Well, I mean, police, when how what was his BAC? Pretty high, bro. He, he yeah, told exactly. police that he was trying to teach his dog how to drive. That was his excuse. Yeah, so I mean, uh, the ideas get out of get, you know, they just sort of escalate and get out of control pretty quick. You know, mm. when you're yeah, when once you're drunk. when you're drunk and something is a little bit of fun, then you got to take a, it to the limit. You got to go. But who's there to enjoy it with you? It's just you and your dog. He doesn't know if he drove the fucking car or not. And the well, booze. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your friend, the booze and everyone anyway, watching. guys, the man, the man was taken into true. custody and charged with DUI hit and run and felony eluding uh, the dog whose identity has not yet been released is also in custody at a local animal shelter. No word if charges will be filed. Well, oh, well, I'm glad the dog's OK. I hope somebody takes it into a loving home and, and rehabilitates it because it's a, a pit bull nice at an dog. animal shelter. Well, I don't see that happening, but maybe. Yeah, I don't see it happening either, but hopefully it does. Not with Wes's in the world. Will, are you still looking at that pit bull? It's probably a nice dog. It was actually already adopted, Wes. Oh, really? A lot of people, lot of people have uh, big hearts. They love right. all breeds of dogs. Well, you saved your cat's life with that one, so that's good. Um, <laughs> I've, fallen, I've fallen in love with one. <laughs> all I've right, guys. I've fallen in love with one, Wes. Great. They're great dogs. I, I know they are great dogs. This is, you know, play along. It's fun. You can hate me if you want. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This next one uh, comes from our cheeky uh, United Kingdom correspondent, Andrew Parker. Cheers, mate. Um, so, guys, the drug cartels and mafia that supply the rest of the world with drugs are always looking for ways to more efficiently import their products into the countries that need it the most. Um, the experimental, uh, they experiment with packaging constantly, trying to find the one that not only preserves the product, but also ensures that the maximum amount of product will reach its intended destination and clients. Um, the authorities call this smuggling, but the criminals call it um, ingenuity. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I don't yeah. think they do call it that. I think they call it smuggling as well. Do they do it? They, yeah, they call it. Um, they call it smart smuggling or something like that, or you know, good. You know, good. You trick. were talking about the places that need it the most. I wonder, like, uh, if that's the places that have the most techno, right? Pretty mm -hmm. much. Yeah. Like no, no. The Prague. techno follows the drug. Well, it's 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 a it's a, it's the opposite way around. You sure about that? The techno doesn't bring the drug. The techno follows the drug. Hmm. Okay. I swear to God. I'd like to see a study done on that. <laughs> well, I, I, here, you can do a study at your house. Just fucking sto go start blasting some techno. See if someone comes and is like, hey, bro, you cool? Not going to happen. I mean, it's not gonna, not inside your home. I don't know. This, we need a more formal study than that. But Yeah, I think yeah. techno and the drugs just are holding hands, skipping down every street they're on together. Um, <laughs> so um, with the coronavirus ravishing the world, the U.K. now has over 160,000 cases of the virus, over 21,000 deaths. The U.K. is vulnerable now more than ever as their workforce is being hit by the virus, which includes law enforcement agencies. So some clever criminals, knowing this and knowing the need for life-saving masks, decided to combine their need to get cocaine into the country with the country's need for masks into 
uh, one, uh, you know, all in one product, uh, the hmm. cocaine filled mask. Can, uh, is it made of cocaine or just has it inside? It's 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 inside. Somehow. This is a win win. Right. This it's is not fucking for awesome. No. Um, would you also, have to dis- would, well, but would you have to destroy the mask to get the cocaine out? That's a big question. Um, probably yeah. You'd probably render the mask useless. Okay, but so it's, 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 it's not really mask. It's just it's for, cocaine. Yeah, I never thought. I never thought about this, but uh, the the whole coronavirus thing with having to wear masks is essentially like the drunk's coffee cup for cocaine addicts. Well, yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. it, you could definitely get away with uh, concealing your identity and what you're... I'm not talking about identity. Well, I'm talking you could probably just, you know, throw some yeah, cane up in there in your mask. You're snorting coke all day. You are concealing whatever's going on with your nose and mouth. Yeah. yeah. Paint huffers love cold this. Sores too. What a, yeah. yeah, it's a cold it's a cold sore boon, too. God damn it. Yeah, it really is. And yeah. you could say you're wearing sunglasses to protect your eyes. I mean, it's just really the whole face is uh, it's yeah. gone if you want it to be. Right. You can be a total mess and no one will know. Um, so, um, that, that the officer seized over $1 million, over 1 million, uh, euros. So, you know, like $1.4 million worth wow. of, uh, cocaine that smugglers were trying to bring into the UK through the English channel tunnel hidden in boxes of masks. So I don't know if they were actually inside the masks. They were in the boxes of masks. I think, I don't know. I don't know how it works, but I think you could probably get a pretty decent amount of cocaine if you slid it through the masks in between the, you know, the two layers there, you know? Um, yeah, so, you could get a bunch in there. Yeah. So smart move, devious, but smart. Unfortunately for them, countries are on to criminals trying to take advantage of this dire situation. Um, home security, Priti Patel, um, sec- home secretary, Priti Patel addressing the press. Um, she had a message for criminals trying to take advantage of this crisis saying, quote, uh, today I have a message for them. Our world-class law enforcement is also adapting and they are on to you and their efforts are paying <laughs> off. Um, I mean, that's 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 the kind of mask I could wear all day, like we we talked about. You know what I mean? But oh, she's, uh, th- this that's the same lady. No, no, that's the uh, that's just me again. When, once I cut the uh, once I cut. The uh, I thought you were saying that's the Miss England who came went went into. It's not. Went into what? Never mind. I I get all the British people confused. Oh no, she's the home home secretary, which is like I oh, guess you said home security. Yeah, I don't know. It, she's just the, she's she's the one who talks shit to drug dealers. Yeah, she's the she's the shit talker to the drug dealers. Yeah, so she okay. says that they're on to them and they better watch out. But um, you know, that's a pretty smart move, I think. But they didn't hey, get Will. away with it. Will, hmm. L- look what's up. Oh, Ooh. I know what's up, buddy. <laughs> and uh, let me scroll to it to see the name of it again. <laughs> yeah. And that is the black couch. Woo! All right. Woo! Yeah, the black couch. That's uh, for like a couch that's in Sigmund Freud's office. The psychological corner here. Uh, yeah. This, by the way, this, a black couch also something you never want to see in the home of anyone that your daughter is dating. Right. Walking, also a porn a black, thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, that's very true. Yeah. Also porn. In this case, we're talking psychology. Uh, the first half is from P Fitz Eleven B. And uh, this is an update from a story we reported on a while back during a legal child dispute in Iowa. Uh, The father, David Ostrom, 40, claimed in court papers that his ex-wife, Bridget Ostrom, 38, and her lawyer had drained him completely as a man. And he, quote, I now wish to give them the chance to meet me on the field of battle where I will rend their souls from their bodies, unquote. So he requested a trial by combat in court. We had covered that. Back in January. Yeah, I remember that guy. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Did you write this drained him completely as a man? Are those your words? Those are. Well, I I mean, I I was I was summarizing what he has. No, yeah, no. They could be taken out of context there. Yeah, they sure could. I could think be a he good meant thing. emotionally. Emotionally. Oh, okay. He, this is not. He he felt this is, he felt wrong because he had asked the judge for a three month delay so that he could obtain a Japanese samurai sword yeah. to ready his uh, trial by combat. I remember that. Uh, and that was back in January, as I had mentioned. Fast forward to now, and David is uh, being ordered to undergo <laughs> a psychological examination <laughs> to, to determine... <laughs> shit sounds about yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, to determine if he's crazy or not before he can see his kids unsupervised again. Uh, and also so the custody case can proceed in court unsurprisingly david is very offended that they would question his sanity at all 
um, as he uh, continues to represent himself as his own lawyer in court. And he's mm. confident that supremely confident that the psychological examination will come back clean. He even scheduled the exam within a week. So yeah. uh, David, David feels like he's going to get away <laughs> with it. And also, something tells me that fighting over a child may make you say some things you might not otherwise. I don't know. So. Uh, yeah, it's it's it will make you say make you go insane if someone's trying to keep your child away from you. That is absolutely 100%. Right. Yeah. This is this is OK. Bunch of questions. Question one. Huh. Three months. Is that because he was saving up for the samurai sword or that's how long it takes to forge one? I, I'm, I'm training. training forge forging in yeah, the he, training. Yeah. Training. OK, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And then uh, second question here. Uh, well, this is more of a statement. Fuck these people for calling him crazy. Like, I feel like if you go back two, three hundred years, we're the same fucking evolved humans. And it would have been totally normal to challenge someone to death. On You're correct. A field of battle. And like all of a sudden, you know, society courts get involved and people are like calling you crazy. Yeah. But he has the wherewithal to even know how long his training's going to take mm -hmm. and how long it's going to take to make the sword. Like crazy people don't have that sense of time. Well, um, also, yeah. okay. uh, you know, there's some something to note there is that back in those days, Pat, uh, slavery would also be legal. You could also probably have sex with children if you wanted to. Yeah, um, get away with it. You could so, pillage. A lot of things have been outlawed. In You've always been times. a fucking pessimist, Will. You've always been a <laughs> glass is half empty kind of guy. Well, just saying. Uh, the moral of the story this time is that it's not okay to challenge somebody to trial by combat in 2020. They will accuse you of threatening to kill them and try to send you to the loony bin. So don't do it. <laughs> Learn from David. That's the natural reaction. Yeah. He, that's what happens in 2020. But Pat, you are correct. If this was like the 1700s, I mean, it would nobody would bat a fucking eye. You right. could just be like, you oh, just another, another battle. your blade. Yeah. You're like, fuck, I'm bringing the blade out. I'm going to slake it on somebody's mm -hmm. blood. Yeah, but, but yeah, back then you had to have the blade. Back then you couldn't, the, you would get fucking murked if you threatened someone and said, I'll, I'll see you here in three months when I'm ready. You'd be like, dead. Oh, you need you got, the blade you on the you. Yeah. yeah. That you'd be cut down. Uh, well, it, you know, David's got a lot of lessons to learn, uh, I think, across multiple centuries. Um, mm -hmm. So here's another guy <laughs> who's definitely going to get a psychological exam. Uh, and this one comes from at sloppy seconds 30. Uh, it's a man from Fond du Lac County in Wisconsin, Michael Miller, 43. And he's been accused of using stolen underwear to set several fires uh, within the county. Uh, how many counts, you ask, uh, is Michael Miller facing in mm -hmm. Fond du Lac County? How many how many counts? You guys? I don't know how them, many counts from the looks of them, about two thousand. <laughs> Oh, bro, it's, this is this, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like he looks like uh, if uh, Harry Potter stopped growing at fourteen but just started doing meth. Yeah. <laughs> Never has a mugshot matched uh, the expectations of the charges so thoroughly, bro. He, he is. is he is so <laughs> so close to casting a spell on you, this motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, he has twenty seven counts pending against him, including arson. <laughs> burglary and possession of child pornography so oh. probably not surprising based on the picture you guys Jeez. have been staring at yeah uh, for the last few minutes here yep. jesus he, he looks so like that's, he's gonna that's be the, right yeah. next to that guy in the loony bin is what he looks like for sure yeah you don't, you don't want to go to the black couch in either situation no. you don't want to be on the black couch uh, for the purposes of the way we're talking about it on this show. i'm glad that was the one that we added last minute i'm glad that yeah existed. that was All a right, great guys. great addition this next one's from sir larinitis we have yet another reason, y'all, to add to the already very long list of reasons to get surgical breast enhancements. Mm. That's right. Apparently, okay. it's because they're bulletproof. According to a recent report. Looking and feeling great. I mean, that's oh, just. Yeah, no, nah, well, I'm, I wouldn't give them that. I would give them lots of other things. But the, the feeling great. I, that's okay, a whole looking. There you looking go. great in some respects. Absolutely. Guys, according to a recent report from the Sage Journal, which seems to be some sort of medical journal, back in 2018, a 30-year-old Canadian woman cheated death after she was struck by a bullet directly in the heart region of her chest while walking down the street. Her saving grace? Her breast implants. That's right. Wow. Yeah, after hearing a loud noise, the woman looked around to try to locate its source, only to realize that she had been shot when she, quote, felt heat and pain in her chest uh quickly realizing it wasn't the sexy kind 
because she saw blood coming down. Uh, yeah. The yeah. bullet, yeah. which was on a crash course for her heart, was deflected by her silicone guardian angel, effectively sparing her life. What? This is insane. Did, did it pass through her or did it get lodged in the silicone? It got. It was in her bod, but bro, it, it didn't pop the silicone. It just fucking... The silicone truck sticked to the bullet and said, not today, Junior. Oh, man. Wow. That is wild. Yeah. That's going to be the new thing. That every wife out there is going to be like, you don't care about me because you don't want to get breast meat in my fake boobs. Well, I'll tell you. This you is really, <laughs> if you Wes, love I'm me, you'd know how at, at risk I am for gun, <laughs> random gunfire. Yeah. You get me these tits. You don't care got about a, me. Yeah, I've got an anniversary coming up soon, and I think that this is uh, settling the debate on what the gift, I mean, should be, because this is not only uh, this is not only something that somebody might want. This is also a safety precaution. Right. Yeah, exactly. It's like a lot mm. of times, you know, your lady will ask for a firearm. Well, that's where the pink firearms come from. When, you know, you go to the fucking gun store, you see right. them, they're always there's they're always in stock. But yeah, you just need a pamphlet because when they ask for the pink firearm, you're like, Great idea, honey. Maybe next year, but first, let's let's build a good defense mm -hmm. before we develop an offense. That's how you win at basketball, guys. No word on who the built gunman in, built in uh, uh, bulletproof vest, basically. I mean, one hundred percent paying for right. Yeah, yeah. and, and it's fun, got perks. fun bulletproof vest. Yeah, oh, Pretty super cool. fun. Guys, no word on who the gunman or gun woman is, but all signs point to a jealous flat-chested woman or the dissatisfied spouse of a flat-chested woman. Uh, but they couldn't find him. But if uh, if they're looking for suspects, that's where I'd start. The bullet hmm. struck the woman's left breast, an implant, uh, with such force, guys, that during surgery, doctors noticed that the right implant had been completely flipped upside down uh, with the dome of the implant having been damaged. Uh Quick PSA wow. here, but <laughs> this is why it's so important to get a properly fitting bra, not only for comfort, but for safety. Doctors were able to remove the bullet along uh, with the battle-hardened implants who received a commendation for their service, and they were replaced by fresh recruits. Oh, mm. wow. I mean, that's just incredible. You swap them out. I mean, this these things are... <laughs> Frame those things. <laughs> Lifesavers. You know I mean? right? Lifesavers. Yes. Absolutely, guys. The journal article ended by pointing out that this was... <laughs> One of only five cases where breast implants saved lives by blocking bullets. And I was like, what? Five, huh? One of only that five, five cases is pretty fucking impressive. Yeah, that's ask me. That's that's five times more than I would have thought. They yeah. were poo pooing it. How, uh, how many other things have, have stopped bullets five times that yeah. you can just get added to you? How often? That's the whole no, point of getting none. breast implants in the Besides, first place. The only other so they don't thing. shoot you. Right. The yeah. only other thing is a bulletproof vest. That's right. it. That and implants. That's it. Yeah. Okay. It's good looking armor. Well, guys, let's take it to the Internet real quick. Chris Taylor says, to be fair, her insecurities that led to the implant also led to the life decisions that put her in the position to be shot. In wow. The first that, place. Wow. What a dick. Whoa. That's a tough comment there. Tough that's comment. A... Uh, D. Callen Moro says, Chris Taylor, how do you figure she could have been shot? doing something she'd routinely do otherwise before the implants. It's a great point. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Ann Interior Insula says, and I don't really get this one. Maybe you guys can help me shed light on this. Nature that mom and God gave us is best, no matter how big or small, but then the laughy cry face emoji. So she's, she's, well, sh sh she's sh saying, sh yeah. She's what saying like <laughs> she's saying like, look, uh, natural's better, buddy, even though she knows she's wrong because it's obviously a bulletproof vest in this situation. She's never been so, shot in the fucking chest. She needs right. to shut the fuck up. Yeah, yeah, she has no leg to stand on. It's just like laughy cry, I know I'm not making sense. Yeah, and to Chris's point, unless she was like shot, you know, on the pole or during like a bikini sh like photo shoot, then he can go fuck off. Also not acceptable to get shot in those places. But no, she was just walking down the street in Ontario. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Guys, to anterior Insula's weird comment, Miracle uh, Nwankwa says, anterior Insula, sex is determined by males in a real uh, uh, actually situation. Thanks, mm. Miracle. Okay. Sex is determined by males. It's the male chromosome that determines a child's. Sex, right? It's the male side of things. Uh, I don't. I don't. I'm not, I'm not sure. Wes, I have no idea. You got okay. I have no I idea. Maybe it's something you'd read up to after you had a baby. No. Well, 
I mean, I'll go with it since I produced a boy, but you mm-hmm. know, who knows? Um, oh, by the way, I that- don't even know. I don't even know what we just talked about for the last thirty seconds. <laughs> it must have been all that coffee. Uh, by the way, that was that was brought to us by Sir Laurentius. I oh, believe excuse it. me. Sore Lor- uh, yeah, Laurentius, yeah, not Laurentius, yeah. Um, I uh, well, I so oh. I, I I opened up my uh, second grade yearbook the other day, mm-hmm. uh, flipping through it, and uh, I'd gone through with a red pen when I was in the second grade and written, like you know, if I liked a kid or didn't like a kid, and I guess this kid really pissed me off because I wrote little idiot next to his name <laughs> with a little arrow, right, mm-hmm. bro. Every single word in little and idiot is completely mirror backwards. Like, that's how fucking dyslexic I am. Mm. I was the little idiot. That's tough. Yeah, I was I mean, the little idiot. Looking back, that's not fun. Yeah, yeah not fun. So, excuse me, Sir Laurentius. Yeah. <laughs> right, I'll, I'll help you out from now on now that I know Thanks, that. Wes. Thanks, Wes. All right, bro. guys. Um, with all this talk of supply chains that we've been doing, being shut down and farmers facing some dire situations and my love of milk... Uh, we decided to hear firsthand from an actual dairy farmer out in California um, how these lockdowns are affecting him and his business. So um, let's go to that now. Hey, Adam, thanks for uh, showing up today. If we have, uh, hold on, I don't, I don't, let me think of what I'm going to say here. Okay. You just said it so well. Why don't you introduce? All right, I'll do the intro. <laughs> Hey guys, joining us on the show today is our buddy Adam, who's a dairy farmer from California, straight from the heart of Ohio. Adam, welcome to Hard Factor. Hey, thanks for having me on today, guys. Been a been a fan for a long time. Oh, thanks yeah, for absolutely. coming on. I'm a, yeah, I'm a big big fan of your work too. Mm. <laughs> yeah, you know, appreciate Wes all the milk. 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 <laughs> uh, yes, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wes and I were in uh, Iowa, Iowa in January, and um, yeah, we ate a, a lot of cheese. It, does a lot of your product go to the Midwest, like? So, so Midwest actually has um, a lot of dairy farmers out there already, and they have a lot of mm. processing. Um, milk, uh, uh, the milk that we that we produce here in, in California, a lot of it is uh, uh, goes to uh, schools and restaurants. Oh, nice! So and, and, you know that. Yeah, and California cows are known for being the happiest cows, right? That's mm-hmm. what they say. Yep. Absolutely, absolutely, that's what they say anyway. So. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, Adam. Speaking of which, we want to bring you on to talk about the uh, how COVID nineteen, how the coronavirus lockdown stuff's uh, affecting your business and dairy farmers generally. I know we talked about it on the show a little bit yesterday how the uh, the meat supply chain is totally effed up because of this thing. Uh, but what's been your experience, man? What's going on with the farmers these days? Yeah. So, so for us, um, coming from a farmer's perspective, and, and I'm not a I'm not a supply chain expert by any means. Um, it's just uh, tough to see. Um, you know, all these, these processing plants, not able to, to handle all the product that they have right now, just due to, due to, you know, illnesses going through their plants and everything. Um, And, uh, you know, another supply chain issue, like I said a minute ago, uh, for dairy, at least a a very big consumer is uh, schools and restaurants. And they're just, uh, you know, that demand all of a sudden just disappeared uh, completely from the market. So, you know, they're big, they're big buyers of uh, cheese and butter. And that kind of stuff has just been sitting on the shelves, uh, waiting oh, to go shit. somewhere. So you have to go buy some cheese right now, everybody. Yeah, yeah. So everybody go put an extra piece of cheese on your burger tonight, something like mm. that. So. Oh yeah. hell yeah, bro! So Adam, we know that, for example, like you know, people are getting sick in the meat processing plants, and uh, we talked a little bit yesterday on the show about how they're having to kill animals because they can't just contain them. Cows, milk cows, somewhat similar, right? Because once they're lactating, you can't stop them. Yeah. So it's not like. Um, dairies you know obviously we, we want to keep the animals alive for as long as we can uh, mm-hmm. um it's a it's different than than the meat industry but um you can't we can't stop what we're, we can't just stop what we're doing uh just because there's no demand uh because of the health of our animals you know we um what we do every day on a you know on our, our daily routines on the farm is all for for comfort health and uh of the animal and then to produce a, a quality product that uh, that we can get out to consumers. So. Yeah. Right. So the yeah. So the the supply of the cows doesn't go down. It's just the demand. So, so how much how much is that? How much has your you know demand gone down um, since this has all started? What's the what what's been kind of like the the hit that you guys are taking out there? Uh, so the 
the, no, nothing really has been uh, mandated by any any government, but um, you know certain certain pra packing plants and stuff have, have asked producers to to reduce their uh, production by at least ten percent. Uh, and you know that doesn't sound like a lot, um, but it um, especially talking you know March and April, those are um, uh, seasonally those are our highest producing months because the weather's so nice and whatnot. Mm. Uh, so it's just uh, yeah, it's it's easier, you know, so it doesn't sound that much and it's a lot easier said than done, but uh you know, I've seen farmers working really hard together to try to, you know, work together and support each other to get to get through this. Can you try to just ask your cows just, you know, to to scale back. Yeah. Just say <laughs> take a, take it easy for a little while. Cuz that doesn't have yeah. that doesn't work. You know, I talk to them all the time. Uh, you know, aside from listening to you guys in the morning, I talk to those girls. So they 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 just never talk back, and they don't listen very good. So, do you have a favorite cow out there, Adam? Absolutely. Uh, she's uh, she's a little goofy. I, I um, so every day I walk around uh, the cows, make sure everybody's okay. Uh, and every day that I walk, when I walk by this cow, she she sticks her nose up and she wraps her tongue around my wrist. <laughs> and uh trying to pull me in whoa that's a talent <laughs> watch out you're, yeah. you're in a different industry you know? <laughs> quite quite the move <laughs> adam do you do you think you could uh if you if we blind taste tested you you think you could tell your cow's milk from another cow's milk uh i could probably tell between uh yeah the breed of my cows but not necessarily the the you know this particular farm oh breeds you, have different flavors interesting uh well, there's chocolate ones. Have, yeah, yeah the chocolate ones yeah they have uh, they have different um, uh, components in their milk. So like the the chocolate ones, the, the Jersey cows that have more fat in their milk, oh. and that's you know better for cheese and butter and stuff like that to make that stuff. Interesting. Love that. Hey Pat, you have a um, comment from another. Yeah. Uh, Let me read this. High member who's also a farmer, maybe in the. I don't know if it's dairy, but. We got a, yeah, we got a DM from from uh, our boy Walt Askew. He said, uh, "Boys, I'm a farmer in a town just north of Nashville. We have a local farm at the table beef company. Uh, it's about to get much worse." Essentially, referring to our discussion yesterday on the show. Uh, also, there's another thing folks are struggling with here uh, in our area is not being able to get migrant labor in. Uh, from what I understand, consulates are shut down in Mexico and, bo and the borders closed, which means a huge percentage of the workforce from fruit, vegetable, tobacco farmers, et cetera, will not have the manpower to harvest crops that require hand picking and harvesting, uh, not to be the bearer of bad news, but this thing's only gonna get worse. Uh, I'm curious, Adam, life of a farmer is tough, man, right? Like, I, I don't know if you guys have migrant workers or not, but is there a sense of impending doom? I mean, beyond what, what we've already felt thus far, or like, what's the vibe? Yeah, um, you know, it's it's pretty, leak in the farming community you know you we try to you know be positive and whatnot but uh um you know the for for us example you know we're it's costing us more to feed our animals right now than we're being paid for our milk so you know that a lot of farmers are seeing that and it's not just dairy it's 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 all across the board to you know all the way to corn and and, and soybeans and stuff in the midwest you know they're, they're, it's costing more to produce than it is than than we're than we're getting hmm. so i'd say the general mood is you know pretty bleak there's a there's a lot of um questions i guess about the future uh, on, right are you guys farms gonna, might survive this are you guys going to be able to get some sort of offset from the government considering that it was it's an essential service you know so um to west it's an essential service no, to west. no no option <laughs> well it's no option to shut down like other places um you know, I mean, there's they're subsidizing other industries, so I don't see why. Um, farm yeah, you know, uh, there, there there was a, a money part of the the, the PPP deal um, mm -hmm. in the last the last uh, stimulus package that was, uh, um, you know, it wasn't necessarily for farmers, but we could apply for that. Um, and I heard Trump talk about some, um, you know, some deal for agriculture in general. Uh, and, and part of that money was to go to um, buy buy product off of the right, market. Right, I don't right. I I don't know if that that was part of the the stimulus package or or if it got got through. To be honest with you, but I I do I do remember hearing that. So well, they need to do something you know, like that. Yeah, 
you know, some folks are having to yeah. pour out milk. Would that, would that be devastating? Like, I couldn't imagine, like, you know, I don't work. I work, but just, like, in front of a computer, you get your ass up at 4 a.m. and, uh, you know, hang around cows all day. Whatever you guys do, it seems fucking hard. What if you had to pour that milk out, man? What's that like? Yeah, so I, I luckily, I haven't had to do that, um, I'll say, yet. Um, but, uh, you know, if I, if I were to have to go open the valve on my tank right now, um, I, I would probably shed some tears over it. Now that's a, uh, oh, man. you know, we, we work hard. We work really hard to, to, to produce this, this product. Like I've said a lot of times, you know, and it's, uh, it's just, uh, just sad to see it just get washed down the drain. Mm. Is there, are there any kind of like programs? I mean, I guess, I guess you kind of have to, before it can get drank, you have to pasteurize it. Right. And it has to go through yeah. some processes, but you know, like I know a lot of, a lot of school kids out there, like, you know, like you say, schools are a big you know, consumer of this stuff, and they, but they still need it. Is there any like kind of program that instead of wasting the milk, you can still get it to some of the people that might need it? Um, or is that just too much of a cost at this point to, to kind of refine it, if you will, to get it in, in you know, people's hands that still, still might need it, but aren't getting it through school or whatever other programs are out there? Yeah. Uh, so I, I don't know if they're still doing it, but there's some schools in, in our area, at least, that were um, – uh, you know, students could go pick up, uh, pick up their, their regular lunches from, from the school. Uh, so there's still a little bit of that, but you know, you know, I got a kid and I can't imagine my wife loading them up in the car to go get a, a meal from school. You know, if we, if we got stuff at home, yeah. um, you know, and, and there's a lot of, um, you know, a lot of push to get, um, like meals on wheels and stuff to, to donate, to donate butter, donate cheese, donates, but you know, dairy products in general just are their perishable things. So it's not like they can, you know, it's, it's not going to keep for a long time. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're going to have to figure out how to eat a bunch of cheese or drink a bunch of milk uh, on the show. Besides, <laughs> besides Wes just chugging milk. Oh, yeah. I'm now. doing it on a regular basis. So yeah. I'm yeah. I need to step it up. I know that. Yeah. yeah. Hey, hey Adam, on, on that school tip, do you have a, a preference for how your milk is consumed? I know some people, some schools are pouch people. Some people, some schools are carton people. Uh, what's what's your stance in the in the in the pouch carton debate? Uh just as long as they drink it, man. Oh <laughs> yeah. And the last question, Adam. <laughs> Wait, I got one too. After you. Last from me. Can you? Have you ever? Is milk the freshest straight out of the teat? Like, do you ever just is do you ever just get out there in the morning and lay on your back underneath that cow and oh. just. I mean, the udder. I thought you meant a human teat. Straight first, from the though. source. The yeah. <laughs> I don't remember the last time I sucked milk out of a teat. It was years ago. So yeah, I, I actually, yeah, I've had tried. I have tried. Uh, I knew it. You know, raw milk straight out of teat before. Uh, it's a funny story too. I used to, um, you know, I I love farming, so I've been doing it my whole life. And I milk cows in college. And whenever I get to the to the barn, start my shift, the first cow in the barn, the first couple pumps of milk, I'd put it right in my coffee. And then, there you go. Uh, that's oh, that's awesome. pretty awesome. Get me, get me through the shift. So. <laughs> Straight that's from the amazing. source. Um, well, one last question. As a milk connoisseur and, and someone who drinks a lot of milk, what is the best way that I – What's should I be purchasing it from a carton, a glass jug, a plastic jug? I've heard myths Ooh. that sometimes the cartons contain preservatives that make the milk last longer. Is there any truth to that? What's what's what should I be buying? So, uh, I'm not a, a supply uh, supply chain expert, like, uh, but right. uh, you know, they I I have heard that uh, glass bottles is is uh, is more it, it will will last longer. I don't know. I don't know why or it tastes better. Something like that. There's I, a huge I, liability I there because it comes with the milkman, and then you know you don't want that guy around. <laughs> Good lady. Point. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it could be bad. It could be a kid that's not yours. DNA tests. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Just my, drink milk. You know, it doesn't matter what you drink it from. Just drink the milk. Yeah, my great grandfather was actually a milkman. To be 100 percent honest. So. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Love that. You have a lot of unknown like uh, cousins. Milk. Well, yeah, probably. But I got, yeah, I, I, got I got milk roots. Mm -hmm. we know. Uh, well, Adam, thanks for joining us, brother. We really appreciate it. Uh, and we hope things pick up for the dairy farmers and the farmers all across this great land. Uh, yeah, bro. And thanks for being a part of the Hard Ohio. Yeah, thanks for having me on, guys. I really appreciate it. All right. That uh, talk with dairy farmer Adam was brought to you by Predict It. 
dot org slash promo slash hard factor 20 you got to go there to get your first 20 bucks matched um you know the stock market of politics we talk about it all the time very fun to bet on and right now i'm hearing rumors that joe biden is about to pick his vp guys i'm, I'm hearing that it's that's really about to happen here and so the market mm. is very hot being traded a lot here are the latest rates kamala harris 31 cents, yes. 70 cents, no. Amy Klobuchar, 21 cents, yes. 80 cents, no. Elizabeth Warren, that's our pick. 14 cents, yes. Third, uh, well, I guess I don't know what the no is because I got money in it. Stacey Abrams, 9 cents. Michelle Obama, 9 cents. Uh, and then down after that. So who you guys, are you, are you riding with the Warrens still? I I'm mean, popping yeah. out, bro. You're I'm out. I, I, I wish that I had I wish that I'd been riding the wave, which, by the way, if you're listening, that's really what you should be doing on predicted is like if you get one day of plus 100 or plus 200 dollar gains, sell, wait for it to go back down, buy again. Uh, but no, I got out of the market. I got out of the market with 100 bucks made because I'm, I'm nervous. Yeah, we've man. All I'm made, nervous we've about all made. Kamala. I'm nervous about her. Yeah. yeah, she's she's looking strong. A lot of people are saying uh a lot of people are kind of hinting that it's down to Harris or Warren. That's what I'm hearing. But then a lot of people are also like, well, Klobuchar would be great, too. So it's, it's yeah. impossible to tell. Well, so. yeah. I mean, if if I've got my I'm with you, Will. I'm, I'm going Warren. So if she wins, gonna it's going to it it's going to make up for that that lottery ticket that um, didn't pan out. So that's what I'm hoping happens. I just yeah, keep thinking nice. about how upset I am generally at the candidates we've been presented with and then how little I like. Or how much Liz Warren annoys me, uh, and then I'm th and then envisioning Liz Warren being on the Democratic ticket is so you're just, just really, upset because you don't even a, like any of the options. It's a dark cloud for mm -hmm. me this next six months. We're six I, months out, by the way, guys. Six months yeah, out from November the third. That's crazy. Yeah, close. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Well, Pat. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I, I I'm sticking with the Warren Obama combo because uh, it's still cheap and. Still pays out good. Uh, Harris, I just don't think is going to be selected, but we'll see. Uh, anyways, go to predictit.org slash promo slash hard factor 20 to get your bets in. You get your first 20 bucks matched at that promo at that uh, URL code. Um, and then, uh, yeah, then you get your 40 to, to bet on the VP. Mm -hmm. All right, boys. Let's get into voicemails and five star reviews. Da -da 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 -da. All right. Yes. All right, guys. First up is five star reviews. Reminder. If you go on Apple Podcasts, and sorry to the uh, Android users, sorry to the Spotify listeners, but we just don't have a measure there. So if you go on Apple Podcasts and you give us a five-star review, we will read, or a five-star rating, we will read the review underneath no matter how mean, how stupid, or flattering. Let's get into it. Uh, this is from Kristen Nicole 0212 one of our 10%. She's a 10 percenter because we have a 90% male audience. Best news <laughs> podcast. Ooh. The only way to listen to news, I don't think I've ever laughed or enjoyed the news like this. The four funny hosts keep you informed and laughing. I love the hour-long shows, so really hope those continue. Oh, I would good. even be happy with 45 minutes as a happy medium. Mm. Despite what others say, I can tell the voices apart, and I don't think Pat's voice is fake either. With all that being said, <laughs> I absolutely do not like the idea of making Florida Man Friday anything other than Florida men and women. Wow. Every Friday, I wake up, turn to my BF, and say, yay, it's Florida Man Friday. Nothing starts a fl Friday off right than this, hearing about those stupid citizens this of Florida may have, from this the may four be best Mark in disguise. Host. It could be Mark. This may be Mark in disguise. Well, I was going to give Pat some shit for, for making her sound a little bit less intelligent than maybe she is like a, like kind of ditzy but until she started poo-pooing my idea and now i'm now i'm really glad that you hey that no you i wasn't hey, chris <laughs> chris and nicole chris and nicole 0212 i was not trying to make you sound ditzy i was just you know i don't know i i i chose that voice without ever reading your review i just went in i'm it. i'm happy that she's listening and enjoying the longer shows i'm, I'm glad that everybody's yeah. enjoying the longer shows we just got to get some we have something we, it's already figured out we got it yeah. figured out what's gonna happen you hear that wes you hear that all right, guys, Beefy Swells says, Ooh. great name, hmm. stop hating on Pat. Uh, anyone who hates on Pat, <laughs> <laughs> anyone who hates on Pat is outing themselves as a dummy. Thank you. Pat Ooh. makes quips constantly that you have to have brain cells to understand. This is what I've been saying. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite reoccurring interactions on the show is when Pat makes a sarcastic joke and the other guys don't get that he's not being serious. 
open parentheses, usually will. Uh, keep, up, <laughs> keep up the good work. Love the show. Thank you, Beefy Swells. Uh, let you know a little secret. Uh, will does get it, but. Uh, uh, sometimes. Another secret, I'm friends. also wildly gullible. So Yes. Yeah. Yes, but that's why we've been friends for so long. All right, guys, take to Drake Eats Taco Bell. Great way to pass the time during Quora. Glad we can listen. Funny news during quarantine. Love that. A lot of people, I think, are drunk writing these. Uh, McGee94 yeah. says, you're welcome. Uh, and then it says, top notch. Keep it up. Well, thank you, McGee94. And then uh, not a power hungry Facebook administrator says, too long. Enjoyable, but too long. And then uh, Joss. <laughs> he, hey, they will be happy. Uh, not a power hungry Facebook administrator will be happy tomorrow as well. We, right. We, we got to yep. figure it out for you. Yep. And then easily my favorite uh, five star review of the week. Ja Salisi says three friends and that other guy. This is what happens when three lifelong friends allow the one guy who likes to brag about his IQ and make up ex-girlfriends to join their podcast. I love that they're getting into the uh, the defending of, of, of Pat now and then also the ribbing. It's all on good fun. Which also, Pat, he brings up an interesting point about the IQ. Where, where, where are we at with the IQ tests and and, and Wonderlicks and things? We got to like wait till po well War Wonderlick we can do. We got to wait to have a proper IQ. We got to wait till post quarantine until we, we can have a proctor in. Yeah. Okay. But, but uh, let's do a wonder. Are they? Are we going to do a boat race on Saturday? Well, we th these are things, and we got to get uh, Mark back here uh, uh, to to figure it all out. But yes, I think this weekend or next weekend, one of the two. Whenever we can get the next boat race lined up, it's either going to be this weekend, going to be next weekend. So what we do is we'll have the next boat race. We'll do a wonder licked right after the boat race. That'd be good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I took, immediately I took, after, like so, before and then after. Before and after, I, I think. Is How many questions? Plans. They're they're only twelve minutes long, right? So, yeah, they're very very quick. I'm going to be Vince Young after that thing. All right, guys, let's get into some voicemails. If uh, you want to leave us a voicemail, our phone number is 512-270-1480, which apparently belonged to quite the Casanova before we uh, took it over, judging by the text we've been getting on there recently. Oh, uh, yeah, For real. This guy, whoever had our voicemail or voice number before we did, was really a hound dog. Uh, let's yeah, he, get was, into he it. was fucking beefy swells. <laughs> <laughs> he was beefy something it's interesting uh seeing uh, a window into what it's like to be like charming and attractive at the same time as, uh, right. I, never had, I, I never had what this guy has. just right, getting let's, let's, shoved in your face <laughs> right exactly let's get into uh let's get into derek hey guys uh this is derek uh calling from raleigh north carolina um i have a confession wes shouted me out uh today um, saying that my, my call dropped and they, they didn't hear my question. Um, truth be told, I might be giving confused Kyle a little run for his money here. I was uh, locking down and turning up a little too hard. Got kind of high and told you guys how much uh, how long I've been listening and completely forgot my question. <laughs> and then I pretended to uh, pretended that the call dropped and uh, after about 30 seconds just hung up the phone. Felt like a complete idiot. But thanks for shouting me out. Uh, my question is, uh, I've been doing a lot of airbnb and checking things out. And I was curious what your guys' first travel destinations are going to be um, after this whole quarantine is over. So hang tight, hang tight. That's a, It's a two-parter. So that was the first part from Derek. Okay. Okay. Hey, uh, it's Derek again. I forgot something. <laughs> um, this is for Pat. Whoever that guy was that left the five-star review but completely just talked shit about Pat. I just want you to know, man, you have tons of hardcore fans out there. If it's an episode that you are not in, I very rarely am able to make it through the full episode because you are the shit, man. Keep it up. You have real fans out here, too. Um, just wanted to, There's been a lot of dirt thrown on your name, so I just wanted to clear some of that up. You, uh, you're uh, honestly my favorite on the show. All right. Thanks, guys. So um, that was my mother has gotten really good at doing voices. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he got on a roll there. I'm not taking what he said at the very end to heart because he was kind of on a roll and then just kept me like, oh, yeah, at, yeah stacking I mean, it I'm on. So, I'm sorry, Derek, that we that we can't <laughs> can't satisfy you when, when, when Pat's out. But I mean, which, yeah. I, well, I might have to up my game. Derek, I am nothing without my, the other three legs of the horse. <laughs> and uh, that's well, the same as we all co-host. 
That was that was good. That was, I lo- I'm, the back and forth uh, is, I love is it. fantastic. Uh, I like Pat- how he called about fucking up his voicemail last week and then yeah. fucked up again. All right, yeah, so the question was, guys, uh, where we want to go, first destination after lockdown is done. Uh, yes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give this a two-parter to you guys. One is the practical, which Wes really doesn't really apply to Wes because he's been all over fucking town. But, Will, one is the practical, and the other is the, uh, is, is the big swing, the fantasy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, practical and fantasy. Uh, the practical is going to be either, you know, D.C. or, or, or Austin. So one of the two. Uh, family or friends, you know. Um, I was thinking and- practical like nail salon, hair, hair cuttery. Mm. Oh, I was going bigger. Yeah, let me. I'll was, give you all three. I'll give you all three. Uh, a haircut number that's practical. Uh, the trip is going to be the DC or Austin, and then uh, the the dream trip would be straight to Italy, because uh, that'd be fun. Love that. Last time I was there, I was there with you. We had a good there time. Go. We had a good old yeah. time. Wes. Um. So okay, I'll go. Um, I'm gonna hit up um, my favorite buffet. Um. Uh, mm. For the around town, um, what is that? that? It's like a, it's a super. It's right here on Westgate. It's got sushi and Just all that kind name. of good. Sh- what? Su- what? Okay. And, and then secondly, uh, I'm definitely gonna go back home for some blue crabs to Virginia. That's gonna be my you know normal back home with the with the folks. Take the little guy up there, and then uh, dream. Um, I don't know, someplace tropical beach. I don't know the, the Caribbean somewhere. Probably like maybe I don't know maybe Jamaica. That'd be that'd be nice. Maybe Germany. Maybe Portugal, anywhere but here, and anywhere Love out of the that. United States will be fine. I'm going to answer for Mark real quick because he's not here. Practical is uh, tiny. His hairdresser uh, dream is Tahiti. Uh, for me, <laughs> it's uh, mm-hmm. any restaurant where I can get served. I miss getting served, man. Really mm-hmm. want to get served pretty bad yeah, bar, here. Bar like a bar or. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are you going to sit? Well, <laughs> like you won't even bar. be able to sit at a bar at first, but yeah. Oh my god, bro! I but just still remember, you could sit at a table though. You get there first, maybe. Uh, no, 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 no. Well, maybe. I'm just gonna get served, bro. I'm gonna. I, I'm, I've been saving up all this change. Gonna take the change to a coin star, cash it in. All that's getting, going right to some service industry person's <laughs> pocket. Uh, the uh, the the travel for me, Wes's favorite place, and the uh, location of Will's bachelor party that I was not able to make it to because of financial issues a couple years ago Ooh. is Key West. Hundred uh, percent going. I changed my Look, mind. I will go with you. Looked at flights yesterday. Two hundred thirty bucks round trip. Looked at looked at uh looked at the nightly price for a place on the beach, hundred and eighty nine dollars. So Key West, uh, for those who have not been, you're gonna love it. I mean, you gotta go. It's one of those places that you gotta go. Uh, there's the the cheesesteak place. I think it's called Mr. Z's. The the guys there will just curse you out, but they make an <laughs> incredible cheesesteak, and it's like yep. awesome when you're. There's also good hungover. seafood down there. Yeah, and seafood. <laughs> All Their that demeanor stuff. is terrible, the, but the conks. Steaks. Eat the conks. The, There's I a mean, great the, Cuban place right on the where the the the, uh, the cruise ship stock. I don't know what it's called, but they've got amazing drinks and Cuban food there. Uh, the whole island the, is amazing. I want to go to the Hemingway House. All right, guys. Next voicemail coming up here. Let's hear from Zach in South Florida speaking of Key West. Hey guys, it's uh, Zach from South Florida, a longtime listener, listening for about uh, a year and a half now. You guys really make the most out of my uh, morning commute. Um, had a question for you guys. Um, before the quarantine, obviously was working at the office and um, sometimes was, you know just have to rub a quick one out um, in the bathroom. Uh, one was wondering if you guys ever uh, had to do that at work. Um, where I did it, it was a, at least a private bathroom. Wouldn't be able to do it uh, public bathroom or anything like that. Now working from home, I'm on Skype calls all day, and you know sometimes you just. Uh, you know, can't get past it. Got to do what you got to do. And then having to uh, do it during the Skype calls, which is interesting. So, um, one, have you guys ever had to do that uh, at the office? What was your uh, ritual routine? And uh, two, have you guys have been doing it lately? You know, with all this work from home, and you know, just what's your overall opinion on that? You know, am I a sick fuck? You know, am I just getting my brain <laughs> clear? You know, sometimes you need the post night clarity uh, at work. So just wanted to get your take on it. <laughs> so he wants to know our masturbation habits. Yeah, well, specifically at work. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, I got, I got. <laughs> so he asked if we ever. Have, first, first, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Before answering this question, I'm gonna ask one question. Uh, will your parents listen to this show? Yes. Okay. Mm. 
Yeah. No, but I, 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 for I, I, I feel like already like I'm gonna be the biggest pussy here because I have not rubbed one out um, at a public workplace. Now, of course, working from home, I can understand what he's saying. I mean, mm-hmm. you're what on I can't the clock, understand, but is, you're also is, at home. So he was implying that he has to compulsively masturbate during his Skype calls. He, he, he. Was that what it was? Because I, I just thought I, I, I think he was joking he, a little bit. He he need, he he's got to release several times a day. I get that. I yeah. hear that some people need to let you know unleash the the dragon one more than more than others. Right. Yeah, so, so will you've yeah. ne- you've never you've never uh, enjoyed yourself at work? Not not at work. Not when I was not when I was like in an office building. Um, of course, tempted to several many many times, but uh, never mm-hmm. went never went through with it. I was I, I was I would have been too scared to do it in the public bathroom. You never and gave in, huh? And then so Wes, I think I know yeah. the answer to this question. Uh-huh. Uh huh. But you do. Have you ever enjoyed yourself? At work, um, yes. At my place of work, I have absolutely masturbated before, but I was it was I was completely alone, the only person there. Um, yeah, tell us about it. I'm not I'm not going to go into any other details except for the <laughs> answer is yes, and I was all alone, the only person there. All right, Pat. What about you? Hundred uh, percent. Absolutely. Fans? If okay. I've been there, I've masturbated in it. Uh, <laughs> in terms of current current. Uh, Current situation, current rituals, bro. I'm just a masturbating machine here. I'm like 14 years old with this. Right, we all stuff. work from home, so it's the, our situation. I mean, the the current is yeah. You'll it's see, you'll see disgusting. my my uh, my, my yeah. barstool cribs comes out this week. You can take a look. I got a a little bit of in, innovation that maybe some of you guys might want to copy when you once you see this in in terms of my routine. Um, hmm. All right, guys, let's take it to Digger. Hey guys, it's Digger, a uh, long-time listener. It's actually my second time calling, but the first time I got nervous after I, I thought about all the tens of millions of your uh, listeners that would be hearing me, and I got nervous and just hung up and never called back again. But now I will not go silent into the night. Um, these people that are calling to go back to half-hour episodes, uh, this aggression will not stand, man. Um, I just don't understand it. Do they not know that you can just go back to the episode? There's not like an episode of Lost where if you don't watch or listen to the last half of it, you're not going to understand where it is the next day. You know, you're going to be able to pick up and listen to another episode just fine. Um, and it's like, like a bag of chips, you know, when they say like 20% more now um, in the bag. Mm-hmm. If you go home with that bag of chips and you sit down on your couch and you can't finish it, just fucking roll the chips back up, put them in your pantry and it, it's for another day. You right. can listen right. to it again later on. If you're, you're, their reasoning is that they they can't listen to the whole thing on their commute. Well, do you have a commute home? Do you just rocket ship back home? Uh, maybe now the commute home can be covered with hard factor too. Um, so my ultimatum is if you guys go back to half hour episodes, I'm going to start my own podcast. I'll get I'll become overweight. I don't think that's very hard. Um, I'll get three other overweight guys, and we're going to start a podcast. Call it Harder Factor or Hardest Factor. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to have a meeting about that one. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to come after you, boys. So stick with the hour episodes. Love what you guys do. Love the show. Keep up the good work. Okay, guys, that was Digger. Digger, I'm going to tell you one thing before we get into it. You're going to have a hard time going with Hardest Factor or Harder Factor because I've purchased both domain names. I also want to give you a shout-out yeah. for some mm-hmm. excellent references. We started with a Dylan Thomas reference, then we went into a Big Lebowski reference, then we went into a Lost reference, and I think he's a Northeastern because that was a Hers Chap- Chips reference, I'm pretty sure, but I don't know. Huh. Uh, what, what's y'all's well, take on, on Digger's know, threat? I mean, like, I, like you said, Pat, that was an impressive voicemail, and I mm-hmm. do not want to get on the wrong side of Digger. No. Uh, so He's luckily, really well spoken. Luckily mm-hmm. for you, Digger, our solution involves keeping the shows quite lengthy. Yeah. yeah so what is the decision here, William? Because I, I know you've been leading the polling. Uh, yeah. I forget. I forget the listener who suggested it uh, today. But Jason, it's, it's, I think. Or? Jason, maybe. Yeah, well, Wes, look that up. Uh, oh, we well. we uh, we've been kicking around some different ideas about how to get everybody what they want. Uh, you know, when they want it. And uh, basically what we're going to do is we're going to have all the top stories. We're going to do a little reverse of what we used to, or what we've done. We're gonna, combination of everything we've done in the past. We're going to have the top 
uh, of the show be quickly all the news, the top stories that you need. And then the back end is going to be a little bit slower. So when we've been doing the longer episodes, we've been kind of doing the reverse of that, having longer, more drawn out stories up front, quicker mm-hmm. shit in the back. Uh, what we're going to do now is have the more important sh- stuff be quicker up front and do funny, goofy shit like uh, whatever, you know, fantasy drafts, all that shit in the back half. Yeah. Uh, Voicemails, interviews, whatever. Yeah, exactly. So every day you're going to have up front, boom, all the news, top stories fast. And then if you want to keep listening, you're going to have whatever else in the end. So yeah, yeah, a little inside from- baseball here, guys. You wonder why this debate's going on. Uh, when our executive producer, uh, who never comes on the show anymore, PFT commenter, uh, cr- came to us and said, hey, do you guys want to do a show? He was thinking, he's like, you, here's what he said, pretty much. He's like, you guys are fucking idiots, and you're uh, medi- mediocrely talented, so you want to keep it short. Basically, so it's really yeah. easily digestible. Uh, and he's right. So yeah. that's what we're fighting here is new listenership, right? So it's like, uh, you know, how do you get someone to onboard to hard factor? Well, you look and you say, oh, it's only 30 minutes. That's not too much of a commitment. But if you guys like the long episodes, real easy, real easy solution to, 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 to solve this problem is just tell more people about hard factor, bro. Mm-hmm. If we yep. grow. Got to we'll spread do, the word. So we, I'd yeah, love to we, do this for three hours a day versus exactly. ev- we'll anything else in my life. We'll do it as long as you want. But we that was Jay Deasy, by the way. Jason is Jay Deasy on Twitter. Jay Deasy. Yeah, yeah, thank you but, for the excellent suggestion. Yeah, yeah but yeah, look, guys, we're we're not we're entering our second year of this pod, so we're still growing. Uh, so we're trying to. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. We got to just keep the growth going. We started as a commute pod, so we don't want to, you know, sort of like, well, you know, we got to figure out how we how we uh, transition with that. But as long as we keep growing, we'll keep the shows long. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. Final voicemail. Let's get into John here. What's going on, boys? Uh, name's John. Called it once before. Love what you guys are doing. And, you know, I don't understand this making shorter episodes bullshit. All these people who are, you know, trying to force your guys' hand into doing that, I think need to fucking sack up and learn to listen to this in segments if they have to. I mean, fuck. You're making an hour 15 of pure gold. And not a problem. So uh, John sounds like he could hurt you real bad. Yeah, John's 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 a guy I'd like to drink a few beers with. I've had some beers with guys that sound a lot like John in my day. Yeah, but imagine that, him. He's like leaning back and talking with his hands, like looking at the ceiling as he's, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's the best part about John. You see him, you see him twice a year, and he's a total wild card. Uh, yeah. He's a total wild. There's a good chance, no matter what, your lady's going to be real upset with you when, when on a John night. <laughs> mm-hmm. On a John night the next day. I anyway, love guys, it. I gonna, love that they want more though. I think it's I think it's fantastic. Fantastic. I think the new system is going to work out well for everyone. Um, oh, yeah. You know, it just like like Digger was saying, you don't you know, you don't have to eat the whole bag of chips, but doesn't mean yeah, you don't have to not nice. open the fucking chips. But we're but we're going to give you a bite sized bag of chips at the front and right. then you can have that like you normally would want to. And then you can also eat the rest of the bag if you want to. Yeah, because we delicious. understand where you're coming from. Everyone on this show is a hardcore addict. So we know it's hard to yeah. stop something once you get into it. Yep. So that's why. Well, Good explanation. Yeah, no, I like it. Just keep it there. We'll figure it out. Uh, But in seriousness, guys, this has been a fucking awesome month for Hard Factor. Uh, It's almost the end of the month. Really, we've never felt more uh, love, interaction, uh, growth, uh, enjoyment, cover the news for you guys, hearing your stories about coronavirus lockdown, hearing about the things you're going through, hearing from members of the Hard Ohio, uh, like our like our buddy Adam, the the milk farmer, uh, and our other buddy, the farmer from Nashville, uh, really couldn't couldn't imagine a better job thank you guys so fucking much uh this weekend maybe doing a boat race got to check with hard factor mark and bubba Other, of the heart of hive and uh-huh. bubba of the heart of hive if you haven't if it's still up buy a free joe exotic t-shirt help us out mm-hmm. uh wes needs the money we all need it but wes really needs it because the private school that he sent his kid to is not offering services but they're still yeah. billing him and it's terrible it's very uh, true other than that, guys, if you can find out who had our voicemail before us, our voicemail number, let us know because we gotta we gotta take some lessons from this guy because he's a fucking pro. Make sure to lock down, turn up, and have a great fucking day. Oh,